In the Mix. Presented by California Pizza Kitchen. Now located in the second floor of the Plaza Shopping Center across from DFS Galleria. Hey y'all, welcome to another episode of In The Mix. Last week, we showed you what's being done to control the brown tree snake population on Guam. This week, we are taking you to the Island Evolution Lab to feature what they're doing to preserve and protect our natural resource, coral reefs. Have you ever watched the television show CSI? Well, it's kind of like the work of the Island Evolution Lab based out of the University of Guam Marine Lab. Assistant Professor of Population Genetics, David Kambosch. We do a lot of different uh, evolutionary genetics work and that means that we use genetics to understand the evolution of reef animals, of marine animals, in order to, to understand where they're coming from, how they're related to each other, uh, how, how their interactions function, and that helps us then to better protect and, and manage reefs. The Island Evolution Lab is comprised of undergrad and grad students. We have several projects uh, going on right now. We're focusing in this sort of first phase of the lab, we're focusing on reef corals. Uh, so we have uh, two thesis research projects uh, by my grad students, Karim and Darian. Uh, and then there is a larger project where we look at multiple species around the island where we have samples from the four cardinal points and we look at the, um, the partitioning of genetic diversity. So we look at how much diversity is there in those different places, how, how different are the corals from each other. And the idea is the more different corals there are, the more resilient the reef is going to be and the population is going to be because there is a specialist for everything and there's always somebody who's good at solving the problems of the day. Karim Pramal, for example, is studying the population genomics of a major reef building coral called Paredes lutea. He is a second year grad student who did his undergrad work studying under a coral ecologist at the Marine Science School at the University of Miami. I'm collecting at four different locations on island. I'm collecting 40 samples per population and then uh, as, as Dave was talking about earlier, I'm making this genetic uh, fingerprint for each of my samples and then based off of, and I'm just doing a bunch of prep work now for sequencing, but the whole idea is, is I'll be able to uh, use a next generation sequencing approach to be able uh, to identify population genetic structure and levels of genetic diversity amongst these different populations of parietes on Guam. What's interesting about his research is that some of these Pyrides lutea are not just found in the ocean, but also in river deltas, where there's high levels of turbidity and low levels of salinity because of freshwater input. These corals are actually found in two different environments. So I'm actually looking at genetic structure, not only around the island, but between uh, adjacent river delta and the normal oceanic uh, Pyrides lutea. And I'm looking to see if uh, these river delta lutea might have higher or lower levels of genetic diversity and then I can identify potential high conservation priority populations of priorities lutea on Guam. In other words, these river deltas could become high conservation priority areas because unlike their ocean counterparts, the corals that are found there appear to be able to survive coral bleaching events. I'm just looking at, based off of the genetic material found in these corals, which ones are more uh, predisposed are more likely to either succumb or overcome the stresses of climate change. Okay. And that's basically, genetic diversity is more of just a proxy for uh, coral health and uh, coral viability based off of uh, ongoing climate change and how they fare in the face of ongoing climate change. Darian Rias is also a second year grad student. She completed her undergrad work at the University of California, San Diego. I always loved the ocean ever since I was younger. I grew up here, born and raised. Uh, so it was, it's kind of sad when you come back and you see like all these coral bleaching. So once I found that, out that, how much impact my research can potentially have for the future of our coral reefs and uh, to, further, to further promote like reef biodiversity, I was, why not save your backyard? Darian is studying the population genomics or genetic structure of Acropora pulchra or staghorn corals. If you've ever been like snorkeling in Tumon, like they're like the finger looking kind of branching corals that you see. Basically we try to evaluate like the gene flow of these of Acropora pulchra. 
So I have five populations around Guam. So when I collect my samples, I then evaluate them. And then what I try to find is that, are these populations genetically connected? Like, are they genetically similar? Are there boundaries to their populations? And then once we figure that out, we can then help uh, inform, like, marine reserves. Like, maybe there's not enough gene flow to this one specific population. So therefore, this marine reserve needs to be more concentrated and targeted. But if there's high genetic flow, then that means that maybe the marine preserve can be a little bit bigger for like a spatial scale. So what we try to see is that um, basically the genetic flow and output from certain populations, is it extending this far or is it extending like to a more local focal scale? So if it is, then we can help inform that restoration and conservation management uh, for the genetic basis of these corals. The overall goal really for the Island Evolution Lab is to study Guam's coral reefs in order to ensure their survival well into the future. I've only been here for two and a half years, but right the first year after I got here, that is in the fall of 2017, so late summer, there was a massive bleaching event and we, we, we saw a lot of uh, loss of uh, corals, a lot of uh, corals died right out here in the bay and, and in other places around the island. And there has been a well-documented decline of corals on Guam, especially over the last 10 years. It's been, it's been pretty uh, serious. Just trying to identify any populations that um, might able to be, that have the genetic arsenal or the genetic toolkit to be able to combat and overcome um, ongoing climate change, so higher uh, sea surface temperatures and, and just high levels of, of, of uh, solar irradiance and solar light. Uh, if you have the genetic toolkit and you have the levels of genetic diversity to overcome this, then that would be, um, you, you essentially want to just identify any populations that have the genetic toolkit and arsenal to be able to overcome uh, the stresses that climate change has been acting on, on these reefs. We always just try to stress the importance of our coral reefs and just raise awareness that there is a coral bleaching problem happening around Guam, but also there are ways to help mitigate these uh, disturbances to our reefs. And that's something we always enjoy doing and going out and helping the public um, know about ways to save their own backyard is just a great way to reach out and also just talk about our research. For more information about their work in coral reef preservation and restoration, check them out on Instagram at Island Evolution Lab. Stay tuned in the mix continues after the break.